Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and good evening. Thank you for being here this evening and welcome to our series of More Than Just Money, a series for anything that is Islamic finance related. Let me introduce myself. My name is Nurul Iman Binti Najib. I am a candidate of Master's of Science in NCF, and I'm also in the research department of IFRSG, covering Sharia and finance. Islamic Finance at Singapore, or IFRSG, is the community of scholars, finance professionals, and students in Islamic finance. What started as a WhatsApp group has now become a society in the making with a long-term goal to serve the Singaporean community through Islamic finance. Tonight, I am honored to share this platform with Mr. Suryono, also known as Pak Sur. Okay, hello, assalamualaikum, Pak Sur. Waalaikumsalam, warahmatullahi All right, so honored to have you here today with an interesting topic: fireside chat with a venture capital capitalist. Paksur has over 15 years of experience in the financial industry, mainly as an investment banker and currently advising Govis expansion initiatives into the Middle East and CEO regions. He was previously the CEO of CIMB Middle East based in the Kingdom of Bahrain for nine years. Prior to that, he was responsible for developing CIMB Islamic investment, banking, and asset management business in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Brunei Darussalam. Paksur has also spent some years of his career in the utility and agriculture industries advising companies on their business development strategies. Paksur has keen interest in areas of renewable energy, food security, and climate change. So welcome once again, everyone, and our guest speaker, Pasur. Thank you, Iman. Um, and I'm honored to be given this opportunity to share my experiences and uh, talk a little bit about uh, venture capital. It's our pleasure, Pasur. All right, let's dive in because today's topic is going to be um, it's going to be very uh, uh, it's going to be very uh, a lot of learning from Pasur and his experience and from the practitioner's point of view. All right. So honestly, Pasur, by just reading your portfolio, I'm inspired and motivated by the tremendous contribution you have made towards the Islamic finance world. You yourself started with civil engineering and Singapore Polytechnic, but then you changed to the finance industry. What made you change industry, Pasur? Because I'm a personally, Pasur, I was from a mainstream school back then was when I was in my primary school and secondary school. And then I shifted to Madrasa al Jinnah Islamia and from there, I continue that path. So is this shift, what's the reason behind the shift of industry? Pasur, please. Thank you, I guess um, as, as the saying goes, uh, it's not how you start, it's always uh, how you end. Um, when I finished a school and uh, completed my uh, national service, uh, I had a choice uh, between um, going to an industry and also being uh, you know, a full-time uh, sign-on as a, an uh, infantry officer at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, um, again, as you know, late uh, 80s, it was uh, Singapore's first post-independence recession. Uh, but then I recognized that um, Singapore is a financial center. Um, and I had to think uh, of the long term and what... Uh, Singapore is positioning itself. So I, I, I think I, and I chose the route that uh, I wanted to have a long-term um, you know, career in the financial industry. So I know where my strengths are. Uh, I'm, I'm good at numbers, I'm good at people, I'm good at business development. So I choose uh, to pursue what I like, actually. So and I, I find out that although education is important, um, but um, you know, learning is a continuous uh, lifelong journey for, for everyone else. Thank you so much, Pastor. So we know that we need to know our strength and we need to be passionate in order for us to pursue in a certain industry. Mm -hmm. Follow-up question, Pastor. For those students who are in the tertiary level but don't seem to be inclined to it as they are chosen specialization, what is the golden advice to these students? Well, I think um, well, this is uh, 2021. You know, There are many ways of getting <clears throat> information out there. And various channels. Um, even uh, we, we have to look at the current situation. Um, the employment engagement is, is different. It's no longer job security anymore where you need to find uh, what you're good at. Um, and even companies now um, on the hiring and all that, they are very specific and defined into getting um, 
people who can actually uh, be productive and uh, uh, make the, the, the company efficient. So um, in, in your, your, your question into uh, inclined to choose specialization. Um, yeah, what advices, I would suggest, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this, I, I wouldn't say for the rest, but this is just my own personal journey. Um, I came from a school of hard knocks. So there's a lot of battle wound uh, along the way. Uh, I was not fortunate to have a mentor to, 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 to guide me uh, or to give me advice or to uh, share the experiences. Uh, but what uh, for me is important is uh, you need to look at your industry captain. Choose an industry which you like and choose uh, those who have been successful in that industry. Um, and don't be afraid to, to network globally. I and mean, use an uh, example in your LinkedIn or Facebook. I mean, professional uh, networking at LinkedIn is very useful, um, you know, and attend as many conferences, be open-minded, you know, webinars, forums, and, and even courses. Uh, this is where uh, you know, I started to, to, to venture out of my comfort zone. Um, of course, if you look at uh, what's happening now, the climate uh, change, uh, industrial 4.0, um, and even the COVID pandemic now, you're seeing that a lot of uh, companies, business models have uh, put in the reset button. Mm -hmm. And technology is, um, you know, it, it's no longer a choice. Yeah. <laughs> So th th this is what I'm saying, um, you know, uh, be, be truthful to yourself and don't be afraid um, to, to, to talk to people. So we should just change, uh, just get out from our comfortable zone and then try what we are passionate because sometimes we need to go on par with the changes that is happening. Yeah. Is that true, Pastor? Yeah, that's right. Because uh, if you look at the um, realistic career, uh, mm -hmm. there's no such thing as ideal career straight line. It's always mm -hmm. up and down. You know? so, yes. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate. I mean, up to this day, uh, honestly, I never had to apply for a job. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, because uh, all this while, uh, the, the job list which I had mm -hmm. uh, was part of my passion and I come forward. And uh, the later part of my career is that uh, you're being approached. You know? So, okay, this is, I know who you are. You know? So, because... Uh, you need to build up your, your, your strength over the years. So uh, networking and building up relationship uh, is, is very good. Never, never been a bridge. Yeah. All right. So I could actually get one golden advice, networking, okay? So to all that is hearing right now, students, and maybe those that are listening to us, networking is important. It opens up opportunities and chances that you would never know. All right. Next. Thank you so much, Pastor. If I could add on specifically, how about skill set? So just now was more to the educational side. What about school set, a skill set that you foresee will be required by our young community to excel in their future roles? So I guess uh, it's, it's important to know yourself. It's always trying to get to know yourself first. Uh, then you, you, you look at what, uh, what are your strengths and what your weakness. And you work on your weakness. Yeah? You improve your strength, but you also work on your weakness. Don't be afraid. Uh, you need to look at yourself. Um, and Very good point to work yeah. on our weakness. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Uh, most of the time that I speak, people you know, they, they tend to shy away, they put away their weaknesses, but actually you should identify where your weaknesses are and work on it. Sure. So uh, that, that's one of the points. And of course, uh, as I said, um, you upskill, you upgrade, you improvise yourself, and you need to uh, be able, as I said, um, you know, the skill set now, um, in the sense for Revolution 4.0, you're talking about smart nation, and mm -hmm. now even um, you no no man is an island anymore because um, business are regional yeah let let alone global uh, but uh, every businesses the trade flows uh, are, are within the region yeah because uh, we rely on the region for trade flows for distribution for all that so um, and 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 open up your 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 ears and your eyes and look what is happening around the region. Um, so, and, and again, uh, the, the key factors, as I said, uh, industrial 4.0, which you can I mean, um, uh, expand to that. You're talking about the smart nation. You're talking about uh, SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals. And more importantly, um, fr from what I see, the, the, the current opportunity now is uh, between uh, the trade between uh, Asia and Middle East. Uh, between Asia and Africa, for example, yes, why, why Africa? You know, it's so alien. And mm -hmm. So, but um, there was a forum just about two weeks back, organized by uh, Enterprise Singapore, and you'd be amazed uh, that the amount of opportunities because opportunities always exist when the market is not perfect. You're talking about fifty-four countries. You're talking about one point two billion people. You're talking about trade flows between Asia to to, to, to Africa to China. 
of $320 billion of freight channels. So one of the uh, opportunities you look at is the payment channels, for example, FinTech. Um, of course, if you look at industry, you can look at uh, various in agriculture, you can FinTech, look at um, the, the various verticals. But these are the main channels you see between Asia and Africa. Uh, these are the main channels between Asia and um, Middle East, for example. But if you look again to, to expand the uh, opportunities between Asia and Middle East, uh, we always go down to thesis. We always go down to uh, demographics. We always go down to numbers. Um, and, and it's a company I will, I will share with you as, as we go on. Right. So now, as we know, okay, we have uh, you, Pastor. You have extensive background working in senior management position of multiple companies, from CIMB to hedge fund company, and also publicly listed utilities company. Could you share with us three main important experience you gain from these experience? Well, before that, um, I just want to share that nobody knows everything. But there's someone who knows something. So ah. if you don't know us, right? For, for the first one, I think uh, you're asking about the, uh, the, the three things. I would say um, the, the acquiring of hard and soft skills, you know, because uh, in, in any industry, in, in, in any job that you do, you need to have your hard skills. Your hard skills are understanding, uh, for example, if you're trading the treasury, you need to understand the fundamentals, economic, macro, and you need to understand how to read charts. All these are hard skills, which uh, comes along with the job. Mm -hmm. But you also need to uh, you know, improve your, your, your soft skills, which is human relationship and all that, how you deal with clients, with your bosses, you know, how you manage situation, how you manage your stress. So uh, that, that is one, uh, because uh, to me, <laughs> um, understanding or, or having the heart uh, and soft skills are, are very important. And the second one is, um, to me, uh, from my experiences, is always uh, managing realistic expectation. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I... I I've had trained people and all that and because um, you know, people have got different expectations. You being a leader, you being a mentor, you being someone who is supposed to lead, you're supposed to know more than them. Um, but it's always uh, managing a realistic expectation. Um, for, for example, if you're a leader, you're a boss, you, you, you employ someone, uh, make sure that there's someone is someone that you really need, right? <clears throat> um, have a clear work plan. Uh, you have to identify your clear key tasks, responsibilities, job scope, to make sure that uh, this is what you want and to make sure he understands. So managing realistic expectation is also always uh, very important. Uh, communication is also key, um, getting the right people to do the right job. You know? um, <clears throat> and um, throughout this identification, you have to do a lot of empathy um, you know, on, in, in research and able to know uh, your, 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 your people. And, and one of the key things uh, uh, I, I noticed uh, is always the ability to manage failures. This is key important because uh, most people they are on the trajectory. They think investment banking working, yeah, you know. But um, you need to manage failures. You need to uh, manage disappointment. You need to manage rejection. So these are the kind of things which help you to strengthen your your your, your personality. Oh, but so these yeah. things could be learned through the experience that we had, right? But so is that there's no, there's no like some things that we need to grasp on. It's not more to the theoretical. We need to go through it in order for us to learn those skills. Is it, Pastor? Or how uh, do you I look think, at it? I think I think everyday situation, you know, everyday ah. uh, poses a new situation. I think you, you, you pick up along the way and uh, you, you, you learn to be harder uh, or hardened along the way. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. And, and uh, important thing, as I said, uh, managing a really realistic expectation, uh, yes. one, knowing your, your job score, you need to have a clear KPI. KPI, measurable KPI, you know, in terms of, um, you know, what need to do when by what, you know. And, and, and there's another thing as well, when you, you set up a KPI goal and all that, you also need to make sure that mm -hmm. you're able to conduct an appraisal. Uh, most people think that appraisal is to pin you down. And no, actually, appraisal is a good thing. I love appraisal because I want to know where my weaknesses are, where mm -hmm. I go. But people think that appraisal, you get, you know, means you are bad. No. So there's a lot of mindset change uh, as, as you work in a big organization. You can see a lot of people uh, 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 having a little bit of uh, you know, misconception about what the whole thing so is. And, and, and the last one, the, the, the point that is mentioned is accountability. Um, mm -hmm. Accountability, again, this depending on your, your, your career, uh, where you are part of the career. Because when I started with investment you know, you, you, you just want to close a deal. But as you as you get promoted, you know, uh, up in the uh, management skills, then you 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 notice that 
your response responsibility change because uh, you need to be aware of governance. You need to be aware of uh, risk management metrics, your reporting uh, metrics, and all that. So, you 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 need to build up all these uh, uh, characteristics as you build up your career. Really. Pastor, I'm, I'm just interested to know, what will you say to yourself when you encounter failure, rejections? What, what's your, how do you actually hold up in that situation? Well, Maybe if you can just share on that one experience, because you shared uh, about, mashallah, like the clear part, the managing realistic expectation, the hard soft skills and the accountability, but maybe just one curious point about how do we face this type of things, like rejections and failures, so what is your, or maybe do you have a motto that yeah. keeps going? Okay, because, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there, there's so many failures I can think of, but, but no. I, I will not I will not name name, but the, 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 mm, the, yeah. the, the key point is uh, when um, there comes a situation where your proposal is being turned down, mm-hmm, being, yeah. the first thing you must do is to hold on to yourself. You, know? you, you must not be emotional. You must understand the journey that you have taken and where was the pain point, where did you go wrong? you should be uh, as professional as possible to draw yourself and understand where you have gone wrong and how you can improve yourself instead of you know, being reserved and say, oh, it's me, is it me, is it the world? And no. In investment banking, you don't have time to be emotional. So mm-hmm. you need, because if you don't do it, somebody else will. So if that guy slack, I will do it. So it's always the competitiveness that you are able to understand, appreciate the situation that you're able to manage uh, failures better. Right, so always be positive. Always have a you know a look at the, the the cup half full rather than yeah. So you you uh-huh. need to manage all this. Yeah. And, and 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 one more thing, uh, yes. spiritual is also very important. Yeah, you so need the to positiveness, the spiritual. Yeah. All right, yeah. thank you so much, Pastor. Okay. Next, you are also well exposed to different countries from Brunei, Indonesia to Bahrain, and we know global exposure. I mean, you know, global exposure is a strong competitive edge to possess against your peers. But how do we accelerate this opportunity to be given to us? Well, uh, the first thing is uh, you must ask yourself, uh, why were you employed? What is your what is your task? What is your responsibility? Mm. What is your deliverables? Yeah. So when you 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 you're being taken in to do a certain task, uh, when they pay you a certain thing, that is your amana. So you need to understand yourself what is your your your, your goal right. in the first place. So I joined CIM in two thousand and three. Um, you know, CIM Islamic. Um, then uh, you know, two thousand and six, I opened up the uh, CIM Investment uh, Office in Brunei. Uh, two thousand and seven, I set up the CIM Islamic uh, Investment Banking. Uh, in, in Singapore, 2007, uh, I helped in 2000, uh, Jakarta for the asset management and 2009, I went to Bahrain. But in all these, uh, the, the, the common factors or denominator is, is actually, first, you must understand it because when you are going to another country, please remember, you are the visitor. That's number one. Number two, you must always understand and respect how the, the, the local culture, the you know the company, and, and that, that is one, one thing. But on the other hand, uh, moving into any country uh, uh, from, from the fundamental side, the company laws, taxation regime, and, and all that. So those are the things which uh, you are expected to do your homework first before you actually go into this region. And once you understand all that, uh, then you, you, you need to do your sort test, right? Yeah. Uh, need, need to identify why are you there? Are, are you looking for um, you know, investment banking deal, Islamic banking deal, asset management deal, private banking deal? So you, you really need to, to, to understand uh, because each country presents different opportunities. So I think as, as a whole, this, this is what is, is important. You need to have a helicopter view of why you are doing things. It's always why, who, when, what, you know, when. So you must always keep on asking yourself. You know. All right, so the five Ys and the one H should be always in our hand when we, we are about to embark something new. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Pastor. Next, uh, you held senior management position in the investment banking division of CIMB for more than 13 years. And we know investment banking to be a high stress and high reward in environment. What is your advice for those looking to join this area of banking? Well, investment banking has always uh, been very uh, tough 
In, in one in one word, Pastor, or in one sentence, how could you describe investment banking? Maybe for those out there that might be confused. Oh, that is investment banking. You know, people thought bank is bus bank. Okay. So in one word or one sentence, Pastor, what is actually investment banking? Maybe. Well, you investment bank, yeah, it, it's basically wholesale banking. You are the face of the bank uh, because uh, in, in banking, the different uh, uh, the branches of banking, you know, there's investment banking, there's commercial banking, there's consumer banking, there's retail banking, there's private mm-hmm. banking. First, you yes. must understand which part of banking you are. Where I came from, from the investment banking, uh, basically it's a wholesale banking. You do uh, equity cap- capital market, you do IPOs, you do m as you do trade sales. Uh, mm-hmm. On the debt capital market, that's where you do the sukuk, you do the fundraising. Yeah. Then you have the treasury, you have the asset management. But in, in all uh, things, uh, you, you, you find out that as a bank, banker, um, you, you need to work with the heads of all these departments. Uh-huh. Uh, and they themselves are very stressed. You know? So uh, you are never alone when you have a, a pitch to do, when you have execution to do. You need, uh, for example, for the, the, the Sukuk deal, you need the treasury people, you need the credit people, mm. you need the legal people, you need the distribution people, you need the Islamic Sharia. It's a collective. It's yeah. a quality. Then <laughs> you, you, you are the conductor uh, because yeah. at the end of the day, uh, they see you as the main point. Yeah. The clients see you as the main point. So mm-hmm. you need to balance up all these uh, people. That, that's where the stress comes in. And when the execution and, and, and there are things which you cannot control. So you're the like central that. point. Everybody is just uh, like facing you and uh, going yeah. around. Hence, yeah. there's come the stress that you need to manage. So what's your advice, yeah. Pastor? What's my advice? Situation. Well, I, I think um, again, uh, it, it's always a skill uh, of people management. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you need to understand yeah. um, how people function and how because uh, it's it's not about you. It's about the team. It's about the bank. It's about the client. It's about the minute because remember, client is the one who pays your meal. So you have to make sure that all this coordination um, are, are, are done in a in, in a very um, you know, efficient manner. So. All right, Pastor, thank you so much. How about Islamic finance? Next, Pastor, okay. From CIMB Islamic, where you were a director, to Yasser Limited, which offers Sharia solution, what are your thoughts of the industry and how can it move forward? Well, good question. Because I, I, I had the opportunity of uh, working with uh, very good people in CIMB Islamic and had a very good uh, basic knowledge of uh, you know, Sharia. Um, how asset management fund management has been structured. Uh, but um, after I left uh, CIB uh, in, in 2018, I joined this um, a great company, Yasa, um, which is a UK, UK-based research. And, you know, um, and, and they were focusing on something which I wanted to nourish my, my, myself. Um, they, they, were, they were dealing um, in, in other asset classes, uh, things like um, renewable energy. Uh, things mm-hmm. like uh, solar farm, wind farm, food security and the production, affordable housing, um, you know, conversion of space and, uh, and, and fintech across. You know. So for once, I, I wanted to get on the other side of the table to see what knowledge I had which could affect the, the real economy. So, uh, and, and I was also very fortunate that uh, the, the team in NASA or international um, you know, from the UK, very qualified people in the industry. And I, I actually learned a lot from them. And um, and seen a uh, uh, bigger uh, you know uh, things uh, not only uh, Malaysia not only Southeast Asia but we have seen transactions in Germany in UK so you 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 get to learn a lot of things yeah so so it widened the scope of yeah yeah because because honestly I was I was positioning myself as I said you know things you need to have a, a short mid long term view because I was already thinking about the climate change, about renewable energy, about you know things of the future. So along the way, you need to be humble and get the best knowledge from people who knows. So don't so, be shy. Pastor, you can see the potential and the future of Islamic finance with the experience that you told us and the, the innovations that are yeah. uh, growing and uh, that you say the, the renewable and etc. You can see it. The, the Islamic finance has its future, right? Yeah, that, definitely. I mean... Um, it's, like, it's on um, par with the technology. It's on par with the changes that's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. But before that, you need to understand the macro of yes. Currently, we are going through a, a, a COVID pandemic. But once mm-hmm. it goes, uh, all of us collectively, uh, we can't run away from climate change. Yeah. So when you talk about climate change in the five ten years, which I don't know what, and you will see all these uh, verticals will be hitting us hard in terms of renewable energy, the sustainability goals, in terms of, so. 
-hmm. all these verticals you must be able to understand identify the, the, the basic the verticals or foundation and pillars of what are the key industries which you need to focus on. And from there, you start turning the yeah. Thank you so much, Fasur. Okay, so before we proceed to the next question, thank you to all our audience and for those that has just joined us in our More Than Just Money series, where all your curiosity will be answered, with us tonight, Pasur, the advisor of Gobi Partner, with the topic today, Fireside Chat with a Venture capital Capitalist. So Pasur, now let's move on to your current role as an advisor of Gobi Partners. A venture capitalist involved in funding more than 270 startups across 13 countries. First of all, could you introduce Gobi Partners and the venture capital industry as well as your role as an advisor? So please. Yeah, okay. Thank, thanks, uh, Iman. Um, Gobi Partners has been around since 2002 uh, in 13 locations. Um, uh, we have uh, currently about 70 professionals um, all over the place and uh, our asset under management is uh, 1.2 billion US uh, dollars. We invest uh, basically in tech startups uh, across um, the, 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 the verticals. Um, uh, okay, what, what is a, a VC? Basically a VC raised capital from LPs or investors and the uh, in exchange of equity, the, the you know, the, the, the oh, sorry, mate, sorry, maybe you could louder your voice a bit. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Basically, what does a VC does? Yes, a, yeah, a, a VC raise capital from investors and invest in the equity, okay, of the early stage uh, pro startup company. So for, for their investment in exchange, they get equity in the company. So we have an aligned interest uh, for 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 the company to grow up in the long term. So. Mm -hmm. And, and VC are very selective um, you know, in terms of um, investing or, or deploying the capital. Mm -hmm. um, there, and there's so, so many opportunities currently, as, as I said earlier, uh, currently we have, there's a lot of uh, you know, uh, imperfect market and we see uh, there's a lot of opportunities. And, and my role, uh, as you mentioned, um, you know, we have been uh, successful yeah, uh, in, in the region, uh, Asia, and uh, we've gone into Pakistan. So my, my primary role is to help advise uh, Gobi into look looking into Middle East and Africa markets. So that is my, my why why Africa market again. It all goes down to the thesis: demographics, uh, population, internet penetration, efficiency, technology awareness, and, and, and all that. So, uh, so basically, we are we are expanding uh, into into that region. So thank you so much, Pastor. So given your background in Islamic finance and investment banking, mm -hmm. how can you value add to the Gobi VC mandate? Um, well, I was fortunate that I've been dealing uh, in the Middle East since 2000. So, um, so I, I had an investment banking background, mm -hmm. I had an Islamic banking background, I had a long relationship uh, in, in the region, I've done transaction. And uh, it's also important for them to, 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 to look into the new market. So uh, that is my direct contribution of how I can help Gobi to, to, to go into the new market. Um, you know, because I have long-term established relationship with SWF Sovereign Wealth Funds, multilateral banks like IDB, family offices, uh, institutional investors. Um, and it's also important for you to have relationship with financial uh, regulators and like central banks and, and the various uh, re uh, related ministries, uh, Ministry of Finance and, and all that. So um, those are my direct contributions because uh, all these relationships have been built up for the last 20 years. And now I'm, I'm, I'm just um, you know, getting all the relation back to my LinkedIn. Yeah. So again, again, what we learned here is that um, relationship and networking is an important way uh, to actually give up more opportunities uh, for Gobi currently as, as your status right now. Okay, so next, uh, Pak Sur, for those listening and already have a startup they are working on, what should they prepare and possesses in order to have a higher chances of being funded by venture capitalists? Um, well, but, well, first of all, um, you, you need to understand how a VC works um, before you can actually um, try to win um, the, the, the investments and all that. Uh, the, the VC processes uh, from the fund mandate, the fund mandate always has got an allocation for certain sectors, certain regions, certain uh, sizes and all that. 
then the, the fundraising exercise because we have a certain clients from you know, some certain clients want this mm -hmm. or want that. So you need to, to, to channel yourself into the right VC, into the right fund. So to identify a, a right VC for your proposition is very important. Next is of course the deal, the, the what they call the deal generation. We we, we collectively uh, from what I have from the partners, we see one thousand mm -hmm. uh, pitches uh, every month collectively. Um, then we need to do the initial screening. We need to do the different valuation. Of course, different valuation. There there, there, there are many uh, methods. Uh, you know, you have the DCF, you have market valuation, you have the asset base ROI, book mm -hmm. value, capitalization, and, and all those. You need to understand how to value the company. And of course, uh, you also need to understand that uh, VC uh, does its own due diligence as well. So uh, you need to be prepared of all the financial, legal due diligence as well. And, and also um, for, for us to take things forward, then there, there, there comes a structuring part, you know, where, where, where uh, how the company um, you know, structured the deals, um, you know, have been taken equity, then investment realization, and also a VC takes a deal uh, in, in different stages from the, the uh, what it from angel to seed series A, B, C, D, and right to IPO. So it's a it's a long term uh, uh, play. So for 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 um, uh, a company who wants to to approach and VC, so there there, there are various the things which uh, you must uh, uh, look at. Um, so your, your your questions is more on the Islamic or just um, how maybe how... both. Uh, but sir, but maybe now for now we will just focus on those that uh want to actually um have have a join in with the vc yeah okay and um part, part of the, those that uh, maybe sorry sorry but so maybe those that want to be funded by vc so now okay. they have a, a business and then they want to be funded yeah okay uh, again um, those who wants to be funded by vc i think uh, mm -hmm. the the, the uh, market intermediation for fundraising is a couple of channels uh, yeah um, PE is more of PE or private equity is more to the late start, um, you know, the buyout and all that. Uh, VC is more on the uh, uh, early stages startup and all that. But between that, uh, there is also another component which is uh, uh, as, as important, which is the equity crowdfunding. Uh, they are the, a good intermediary fundraising platform, which I see uh, they are going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, converge into. Uh, and, and this equity crowdfunding, again, they are also. Uh, uh, Doing fundraising uh, for the, uh, the the companies. Company. Yeah, I, I mean in, in this region, I can think of um, you know companies like Etis. You know, they're, they're very good uh, equity crowdfunding uh, platform. So maybe um, if one um, confused part, sir, like yeah. what's different between venture capitalist VC and also crowdfunding? Uh, crowdfunding. Okay, good, good, could, good question. Yeah, what's the define? What's the fine line between this? Two? I think the the, the the fine line difference uh, occurs. Um, the deal size and the, the, the you know the, the deal size uh, I, okay. I think would be the the, the main difference because uh, um, for us a series a b we can go uh, as as little as um, half a million back to 20 million so that's our deal size mm -hmm. but i could take crowdfunding and and it's getting interesting because I, although they're starting to do uh, small deals but now they are getting into the space which is very much welcome so uh, and again um, in, in anything um, whether it's crowdfunding, whether it's VC, uh, there are certain uh, parameters which uh, both of us look at. One is the US, what we call USP, the Unique Selling Proposition or, 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 or MVP, the uh, Minimum Viable Product or the Proof of Concept. There must be a story um, uh, to, to, to ensure that uh, you're able to, to, to approach uh, at, at the right time. Product service um, differentiation, uh, these companies, they need to have a very um, clear, positive, um, you know, financial projection, a clear business plan. Um, whoever the founder is, they must be, be, be able to identify the gaps, um, you know, and, 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 and for them, uh, this is what, what I feel is, is important for companies approaching a VCs or, 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 or CF. Uh, they must focus on the problem, not on the solution. Because uh, mm -hmm. most of the time, people come with, oh, I can do this, oh, I can do this, I can do this. But, whoa, we don't need that. You need to identify what the problem is and use that technology to solve the problem that will excite us. Not the other way around. Because most of them, they come up with ideas, but uh, it's not scalable. It's not marketable. There's no product. So you just business. give us an example. What do you mean by giving the solution instead of, I mean, not, not looking at the solution, but instead looking at the problem. Okay. Just just mm. example, uh, one, yeah. one, one, one of the things um, uh, I, I can't see anything specific. Uh, yeah, it's just like maybe, yeah. yeah because uh, given, given the current COVID situation now, um, you know, uh, 
people are staying away from markets, people are staying away from. So they, they, although they want to keep a, 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 a distance from um, the, the, the market, but they still need to have markets. So you're talking about e-commerce. When you're talking about e-commerce, you're talking about food delivery, you're talking about it. So these, these are the kind of things uh, which uh, is, is very important because you, you help to uh, improvise, you help to create market efficiency. But you see, uh, Many a times, once you have identified the pain points, you create a solution, that's where technology comes in, not the other way around. So mm -hmm. you always, it's just like building up a, a, a soccer team. What is a good soccer team? You need a good goalkeeper, you need a good defender, you need a good striker, mm -hmm. midfielder. And like, you don't come up with, hey, I got 10, six-footed goalkeeper here. What do you think? So it's always trying to understand where the pain points, uh, you know, and, 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 and that, that's how you, you, you approach um, and 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 when you 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 throw that um, then there's the <coughs> the hard the, the the hardware on the software um, is always uh, VCs always look at people people because you know, this is early stage where uh, we don't have uh, much track record on on the, the company but uh, people is very important because that's uh, that's where where they come from where they're able to. Uh, manage the team, whether they identify uh, and, and recruit team, the physical, mental strength, uh, whether they're agile, whether they're creative, whether they're flexible, whether they're, mm. uh, they're able to, 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 to take in ideas. Because the, the, the moment uh, <clears throat> uh, VC, um, you know, for, for us VC, when we invest, there is an equity stake into the company. That's where um, we need to understand <clears throat> what are the um, contribution of the, the, the VCs and the founder. So um, although the founder has got a good extensive product knowledge, uh, is the VC which uh, you know, inject the smart money. What, what do we mean by smart money? Smart yeah. money is just not smart money because it comes with the <clears throat> financial management, uh, which is extremely important. It helps to improve the governance, execute the exit uh, in terms of HR, IT, recruitment, and, and also uh, VC, they are good business connectors. Uh, mm -hmm. So they, they were able to bring in other VCs into, into, uh, into the deal later on as, as uh, Again, your, your question is a very question. Uh, where's the thin line between VCs and... And crowdfunding, yeah. This is a very good question. I, I, I like this question because uh, VC and ECF brings two different things because VC tend to invest into companies behind the VC, they are institutional investors and all that. So mm -hmm. they, they, they invest through a fund, through a mandate, through... Uh, a, a, a channel whereas yeah different yeah. process yeah, yeah. whereas uh, ECF uh, you know uh, when, when you do some some promotion and all that mm -hmm. the promoters they're able to get a, a, a different kind of crowd so um, so uh, and, and, and to me um, who knows this crowd are able to follow up this company and and, 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 and invest in the long term so I, there, there's no right or wrong it's just a matter of uh, your preference and at which stage you are and how much you want to raise and, and, and all that but of course, uh, again, the fundamental difference between VCs and ECF, uh, VCs invest as our capital fund. So we have a stake in the company um, in, in, in that sense. So whereas uh, ECF as a crowdfunding the investors, they themselves have got some uh, stake in it. So that, that, that's how it works. But uh, in, in my point of view, uh, ECF uh, has got a, a very, very important role to play in, in this funding. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, highlighting the different, the fine difference between crowdfunding and also uh, VC. Okay, now specifically, specifically, Pastor, if there was to be an Islamic ventures um, capital, how would you envision the process to finding and funding the deals? It's asking good questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think fund fundamentally, um, whether uh, it's uh, Islamic or whether it's um, conventional VC. So maybe, sorry, Pastor, before you answer, my, from my question, people might uh, get it differently. From maybe the, the our audience might question, is it venture capital is not Islamic, you know? So from my question, it will it will have a different perspective from people. So would okay. you clarify first, pa uh, Pastor, and also then you deal back to the question. I think, I think uh, whether, whether it's uh, Islamic VC or non-Islamic VC, mm -hmm. the, the, the funda fundamental approach of uh, the deal is, is, is the same. You, know, mm -hmm. you need to, uh, to ensure that the deal which you invest is, is a viable long-term deal. You know? and, and those kind of 
disciplines which you embark, as I say uh, earlier on or shared, uh, the thought process is the same. So, and whether there's a, you know, of course, um, if you want to, uh, on a granular basis, to talk about uh, Islamic VCs, then you first you look at the sectors, of course. Uh, they're not investing into weapon, they're not investing in pornography, they're not investing into uh, you know, mm. alcohol. Or, okay, fine, that's fine. Then the next part is, um, okay, what are the industries which uh, you want to invest? Okay, for, for Islamic VCs, okay, maybe it's e-commerce, maybe it's mm. modest fashion, maybe it's um, halal pharmaceutical, um, travel tech, you know, going to Makkah and all. Th those are fundamentals, uh, are, are good, um, you know, industries or sectors to, to, to work with. Now, the, uh, it, it's just like, uh, if I can just uh, bring back um, uh, uh, how I, I look at this, it's just like um, bonds and sukuk. So both are mm. debt instrument, both um, at the end of the day, you go to market, um, you know, depending on credit rating, you know, get um, your, your deal done. But the, the, the fundamental difference is how the uh, bond and scope is being structured. Now, for, for VC, is the same. Um, in, in the sense that the uh, categorically, uh, the, the fundamental of looking at the deals is the same. But there, there, there will be some, uh, you know, and I hope this, uh, the, the industry will, will, will come and take this on. Uh, because there, there, there must be some progress in terms of how you want to approach uh, Islamic VC in, in a real sense. Um, substance over form, form over substance. But let's go into the view because um, in the uh, term sheet is fine, but there comes the, 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 the period where you start talking about uh, documentation. And there are, there are, there are going to be some shiny issues. You're talking about convertible debt, you're talking about anti dilution clauses, you're talking about preference shares, you're talking about drag along, and all this will be an Sharia issues. I mean, they're not really issues, they're not um, you know, other issues, but these are real governance issues of how you actually look uh, this is, um, and I'm, I'm assuming that you're, you're, uh, this is a good company, there's mm -hmm. growth, there's this, so um, th th there must be a discourse soon if they really want to have a, a good uh, approach towards Islamic VC. Um, and and I, I feel, um, <clears throat> you know, um, you, you look at GCC, 65 million, um, Pakistan, 220 million, you're talking about Africa, 1.2 billion, mm -hmm. Indonesia, 280 million, what not? These are Islamic countries and, uh -huh. and, and there, there is a, 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 a space for VCs, Islamic VCs in Asia. So there must be some areas of progression in terms of uh, how you actually structure. Uh, this is a structural issue of how you want to do an Islamic VC. So that, that, that's my point. I mean, I'm not a structure, I, I'm not a Sharia scholar, but this, this is my point coming from a, a very uh, technical approach of how I see things. All right, thank you so much, Pak Sur. Um, maybe now, okay, let's talk about the areas that VC are looking into. Is it just the technology solution like AI, blockchain, or are there any areas the startup companies need to understand? Uh, well, uh, again, um, macro, micro, uh, the various verticals, the various, uh, when you say verticals, we're talking about agri-tech, fintech. I mean, I mean, fintech itself is a huge uh, subject. You can talk about insurance tech, you can talk, talk about payment channels, you talk about uh, digital banking, you can talk about you know, delivery. So, so there, there are, you, you need to, or, or, or how the way we see it, uh, you need to have a good uh, one, um, a thesis to, uh, investment structure or investment approach. Three, you need to identify. It's always what we learn first in economics. It's always supply and demand. So where are the pain points? Where are the marketability? So, so those are the things. And for me, whether it's AI, blockchain, crypto, cloud, whatever it is, to me, those are tools which is able to support what you're trying to deliver. Mm -hmm. um, payment channels, for example, um, just 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 an example of one of the companies which invested um, from Africa, Nigeria to China. Say, why? You're talking about three hundred and twenty billion trade between Africa and and, and China, and where 85 percent of African products are being imported. Most of them are coming from China. So, um, and payment channels, you know, TT banking will take five days. Yes. If, if it arrives. So, um, of course, to, 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 to resolve this, um, yeah, you need to have a payment channels uh, where this is fintech, mm -hmm. but then uh, it's not as easy as, as what it seems. You know? uh, there's always the platform issues, the regulatory issues, the DD issues, you know? so 
but the, the, the key point is uh, if you're able to um, uh, capture that payment channel where for every dollar now to send the money 20 percent are being used or just used for yeah you know, for, for those costs uh, if you can find one faster to uh, you know uh, a cheaper and those savings can be used for other purposes so yeah. these are the kind of uh, uh, uh thing which you must be creative into solving um, mm. as i said between uh, regional between channel between opportunities and using fintech yeah. or the technology to help you to arrive to, to, to the solution yeah so the alternative can actually be the solution and sometimes we just need to be on par to be efficient right Pasur? yeah yeah exactly so, so just uh, imagine if we still i mean for example vc still go on the uh, traditional process we need to transfer money in this specific uh, manner it won't be that efficient hence we need to go in par with the technology that has already been uh for us yeah so because um if you look at uh deriving the efficiency of all mm -hmm. these uh, you know if your money can arrive within 20 minutes or five days that's much better, better <laughs> yeah you can just pay 5% or cost instead 20%, you know, just money. Another... money can be used for other uh, economic beneficial things yes. that you can spend your business. And so those are the direct benefit for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, 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 the bigger, you are using technology. But having said that, as I say, it's not as easy as it because you're talking yeah, about, yeah. You're not talk, you know, talking about um, regulatory, that you'll be hit yes. by the central banks. There. So, but that is a journey, but that is also uh, something which uh, the, 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 the market recognize uh, that this thing needs to be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Parsur. So now let's go to our question from Publix. Okay. Let's, uh, let's uh, refer to the Slido. There's a lot of questions waiting oh. for you, Parsur, but <laughs> time is not on our side. Okay. So let me just pick the ones that I guess has the most. Um... Okay. Mm. Okay, but sir, there's a question that is over here. Why does the VC industry sound so secretive and serious? Ah. Well, I think uh, <clears throat> that's the reason why I'm trying to demystify and having this. Uh, it, it's, it's nothing sec secretive or serious. Secret. About. <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> maybe I can share with you how the recruitment or how the VC works and all that. Okay, at, at mm. the partners level, senior level, advisor level, you know, um, we, 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 we know each other for more than 15 years. So they know the seniority, they know what you, you can bring in. That, that's one. Second thing is um, how, uh, for, for me to answer that, uh, you, you need to understand who is in the VC. So, and how to get into the VC. And, and there are very uh, different uh, kind of roles in the VCs. Uh, there's investment analysts, there's an associate, there's a VP. So, um, and, and each one has got different roles, uh, number crunching and all. So it is not secretive. It's, um, it's a matter of getting to know. As, as I say, um, there are what, 15, 20 VCs in Singapore. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, Brother Ridwan, um, you know, um, I, I thank him for, for you know, speaking with me to say, Pasu, you need to come, you need to help the because there's, there's nothing secretive about this. At the end of the day, People like us, VCs, we are looking for good deals and people must come forward to us and show the good deals because as much as you're looking for us, we are also looking for good deals. But for you to arrive to that good deal, then you must uh, be able to come up with a certain level of expectation of what the VC is looking for. And there are many uh, ways of getting uh, into the VC's um, you know, uh, radar. Uh, you can go into accelerators, you can go into incubators, you can go for... So, so, my point is when I first started half an hour ago is to, to, to encourage people to, 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 to make friends with VCs. And you know, so um, we, we, are, we are normal people. Yeah. All right, so thank you so much, Pastor. So we are also thankful for, to have you here to explain and to also create awareness that the existence of a VC actually, okay? And also the next question, Pastor, I heard, okay, maybe this question, okay. What are the necessary risk mitigates in place when investing in a startup okay uh, again uh, that is where uh, during the uh, due diligence process and all that because uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day okay VCs as I said um, we invest in one or two or the hundred which is which and 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 again being very realistic uh, not all our investments um, you know hit to become a unicorn and all that there are some some things that 
but it's, it's along the way uh, when we get to know the the uh, the, the founders uh, where we become the mentors where we are aligned in terms of having equity in the company that's where the risk mitigation uh, comes into play well you see um, there, there, there's a difference between founders and owners you know? so founders remain founders until the end of the world but the owners can change within you know the, 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 the company so you must be able to be agile as i mentioned earlier on uh, mm -hmm. to be able to accept ideas because the the trajectory or the value added of the smart money coming from vc is to ensure that the investment works so that, that's where uh where vc come in uh, like 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 gobi for example you know we have invested in you know, 200 companies uh, we have the experiences of what works and what doesn't work so when we place uh, you know, an, an investment into the company, we want that company to work. So the risk mitigation is always, uh, we are a partner to the company. So it has to go, be realistic. And of course, there are certain changes uh, like, like right now. So yes, we have companies invested in, 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 in the travel tech industry, but COVID does not uh, allow them to travel. But you see, what is the risk mitigation? Yes, we have trust in, 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 in the company uh, because the company that they are invested in they are involved in, 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 in Umrah and Hajj travel. And these are the kind of, um, you know, in Shabku, when the, the situation comes, it, it's, it's a guaranteed business, you know, until end of time. So all these things, so we, we, we mitigate the risk according to where the situation is. And, and it's also always good uh, to be as transparent, open, and able to accept ideas. Okay, maybe one last, or okay. Uh, maybe two questions. I combine it, Pastor, okay? Uh, what got you into investment banking, okay? And then if I could, I would like to just like combine the question with, okay, um, because, because we understand the nature of investment banking, as you mentioned, right, just now, okay, where you are the central and everybody come to you and et cetera, you need to deal with all the departments and et cetera. So let me just relate it with another question. How much is emotion attached to analyzing a deal and how do you objective in your analysis, okay, when everyone has their inclination? Maybe two in one question, Pastor. Okay, first, um, you know, if I can un um, answer correctly, uh, my interest in into getting... Um, um, into investment banking. Well, um, it was, I mean, just, just rewind back, um, you know, my career when I started um, and the career in, um, after finished my national service, I was in the money broking. I understood uh, FX as uh, I learned options. I learned um, money markets. Okay, that's one asset class. As, as I, I, I moved on, then I started to trade um, into, into currencies. And as I moved on, I started to uh, go into a hedge fund. Uh, again, hedge fund, it was, something pretty new in year 2000 uh, because I always wanted to understand how hedge fund, how does it work, what are the strategies, where are uh, all the, um, you know, the intermediate risk coming from the prime yeah, brokerage and all that. So that, that was one. So everything was, was, was out. I think, um, I think if, if I may allow, in uh, year 2000, I had this uh, fortunate meeting with uh, Dr. Dabaka as well. Mm, um, okay. Yeah, I knew him since 2000. He's, he's a good friend. Um, but at the end of the day, um, yeah, I, uh, he, he, he opened up my mind. So uh, this is Cyrano. This is his, uh, he's always encouraging me. Okay, look, listen. But you know, at the end of the day, you have to come forward and stuff. So that's where um, I, I, I started to join um, uh, CIMB Islamic. Uh, and I wanted to have a clear role. What was CIMB Islamic role for me? So I had to leverage my background, on my treasury, my trading, my options, uh, my equity, my hedge funds. Because at that point in time where CIMB was uh, in a growth mode, they wanted to expand into the region. One, I have the strength. Two is the products which they're looking at, I have the knowledge, you know, into building up asset management business and project. Mm -hmm. So it comes quite um, uniquely uh, where, where I got it from. So after that, when um, understanding all that, I wanted to go into um, more investment banking. So I go into debt capital market, uh, soup, Suko issuance, um, equity. So I, I think what, if you ask me, was um, you know, the, the drive, the hunger, the drive. I, I'm still hungry now uh, yeah, for, for, for knowledge. Um, you know, yes. And I feel, yeah. So we, we must always find something which you like and you don't have to work for the rest of your life. And I mean, it's always mentally nourishing. And to your questions about um, uh, emotional on treatment. Yeah. Yes. Towards um, inclinations also, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, you, I mean, you, you have a mandate, you have uh, the investment banking pitching for a deal and all that. You win some, you lose some. And, but end of the day, um, what is uh, the, the, the direction of uh, what institution is trying to achieve? So again, uh, like for VCs as well, you know, I may have my own preference into, hey, look, I like this sector, I like this sector, but that's not how things work because when, once there is, there is a fund for 100 million, 150 million, to start with, there's always an allocation of sectors. To start with, there's always a limit for each company to start mm-hmm. with. And so those are the kind of things uh, which you, once you understand where the opportunities are, where you can uh, you know, deploy the cap- capital, and that's where you are going to search your, 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 your radar to finding a deal switch to fit into the mandate because that's what your client wants. So you, you always need to, 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 to find out the uh, both sides of the coin, uh, what you want and what needs to be done. Sometimes some things are good to have, but that's not necessarily what needs to be done. So uh, being in this industry, uh, what I learned is uh, never be emotional because, uh, uh, yeah, you can't solve. Pro- I mean, we we can't solve problems if we are emotional, especially no, no, in financial no. finance industry. Yeah, yeah. especially on regular industry, especially where where uh, you are taking amana of your board, you are taking amana of your Mana. shareholders and all that. So, uh, if really? you can't handle that, don't be in it because you you need to be very very professional and and, and not emotional. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, and indeed. Um, I believe that from your sharing, your knowledge, your experience, as I believe that the greatest of all riches is education and experience has been shared by Mr. Sur himself, but Sur himself. So we have learned so much, alhamdulillah. A big thank you to all that has tuned in with us. And thank you again, once again, to our speaker tonight. Pak Sur, Mr. Suryono, I believe that's a lot more that you would like to share with us, but time is not on our side. So do look out on IFSG Space for the next episode of More Than Just Money, a series for anything that is Islamic finance related. So once again, thank you to all participants. Thank you, Pak Sur, and thank see you, you again. Much. Good night and stay safe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>